All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Down. And uh, I wanted to come in here just for a moment and try to talk to you uh, on a serious tip. I mean, I want to try to do whatever I can to stimulate our conscious and our mind um, so that we do not, you know, just continually walk around on a daily basis um, with a spirit of apathy uh, upon us. Uh, but I want to ask a question. I do want to ask a serious question. You know, all over YouTube as well as other uh, social media networks, we see WROL, okay, without rule of law. And my question to each and every last one of us is, is that, you know, how much time do we actually think um, about this on a daily basis? I'm talking about, a, you know, what would you do? And do you have a contingency plan in case one day you wake up and you live in a world without rule of law? I mean, have you ever really thought about that? Because when we look at the... Um, the social uh, unrest that we're dealing with here today. We look at the economic uh, instability. Uh, there, there's nothing at all um, that we can trust in. We found out that from cradle to grave, we live on an illusion of what you call freedom. We've been lied to. And they make laws, and they pass those laws. And if you have noticed, um, somebody who has made up their mind to be unlawful um, they're not thinking about obeying the law, so therefore they're not under that law. And they could just about get away with just about anything, um, any type of evil perpetuated upon you or I or anybody uh, until they get caught, if they get caught. And so that's why, you know, I, I, I can't trust in a, a system that is built upon lies to actually preserve me and, and those who I love. And you should not depend upon that system either. I mean, you think about this for a second. We already... Uh, are jacked up and duped so much to the level that we, when we go to the grocery store, most people don't think when they go into the grocery store that you are getting ready to enter into an environment that's probably going to contribute um, to you not living a quality life, i.e. Uh, with the products and so-called quote-unquote food sources that they have in there, um, you stand almost a 99% chance of getting one of these degenerative diseases. Or dying a horrific death um, because of all the chemicals, the toxins that are in the environment, uh, everything that we're supposed to be so-called doing, and, and everybody has, you know, the love of the dollar, the love of money. Uh, I mean, I do you really think? I mean, I get on here continually trying to do whatever I can, to, you know, to um, stimulate thought amongst the people. I, I want to try because I do know that as a lead, you know, unless a leader gets up here and he says something to try to expand the regions of our minds to get us to think outside the box that we've been so conditioned and trained in that we're not going to otherwise stretch ourselves beyond any of those measures and means. And don't get me wrong, I understand it, that we live in a time um, where people are now calling evil good, or either they don't want to call it evil at all, and they're calling good evil. You've never in your life seen such a shift that when someone has set their heart to do good, to do right by their fellow man, you never in your life seen the attack, the literal attack that comes upon those people who literally just want to do their neighbors good. I mean, we live in some bad, bad times. And children growing up in this world, like I've always told my children, you're not going to grow up in the environment that I grew up in. And, hey, the society was on a decline then. And it's really on a decline now. I mean, it's it, it's running as fast as it can down the mountain into the eternal lake of fire. But they're not going to understand one bit um, about the life and, and the childhood that I came up in because, I mean, everything is declining all around us. I think more than anything that we would do good, especially when we're around each other, to try to speak sober words and to sober up our minds because um, I don't believe that government should be taking care of us from cradle to grave. As a matter of fact, I think you should live your life independently. I think you should be in control of yourself as much as possible. In order to do that, you can't be a slave to the system. I think that we should actually have a lot of our conversations centered and focused around, um, you know, what, what are we going to do if those trucks no longer come to those stores? I mean, can you really trust that those trucks are going to continue to keep coming to stores? I mean, so many times um, here, especially in the last few years, people believed that they were going to be able to hold on to their jobs. Because their jobs bought them and afforded them the lifestyle uh, that they were able to live. And 
the majority of these people found out that since they did not take any thought for the future and did not prepare for the future, uh, now they're suffering real hard for it. You know, that's one thing about preparation. When you prepare and, and you have a mindset to be prepared, uh, if things never go awry, if they never go wrong, you're always ready. Isn't that beautiful? But then on the other side, if you never do anything to prepare for anything, and you just assume that this society as well as um, this nation is going to continue to keep functioning the way that it always has, and you can see it morally declining, you see the spiritual decay, you see the corruptness that's in the government all across the board, and you see what they're doing to the food supply and the system and stuff, you never prepare um, it's going to be a painful, painful thing. A very painful And most people in America now who trusted in their jobs, instead of using those jobs as a means to a greater means, i.e., remember, I go get this job, and, and as quick as I can, I'll pay this house. As quick as I can, I'll pay this car. As quick as I can, I'll pay all this off. And I never, ever, ever sit up there and have an extraordinary amount of debt um, over $10,000. Can you imagine that? No, most people didn't do that. Most people, we live in a credit-based system, and now the majority of people are suffering for the decisions that they chose to do. Hey, it's the same thing. I don't care what area of truth you want to touch in. You're always going to have those that are going to oppose you and fight you every step of the way. And, hey, you cannot tell somebody who's making $30 an hour that one day your job is not going to be here. Ask those folks up in Detroit who was working up there for General Motors and the lifestyle that that job afforded them and how they was happy to get up every morning and go to work because, I mean, after all, it's not a bad deal to get a $1,000 a check every week and live it up. And But what do you do when you depend upon that and you just assume? Because we've been conditioned that way. I mean, your grandfather may have worked there, your father may have worked there, now you're working there, but now all of a sudden the rug is pulled out from under you and... They're non-existent. As a matter of fact, General Moe's still making cars, but they're not making them here in America. And the reason why they're not making them in America because you Americans barely ate too much about the wages that you're making and stuff. And so they just assume, oh, they, you know, hey, the best thing they do is say, we just jump ship. We just go across seas and, and pay these people a third of what we were paying you. Still come out with the same product. And then not only that, ship it back here to America and you still buy it. Well, that's your gap to Captain NAFTA. I call it the ABC alphabet soup people. It's been this way in religion. It's been this way um, in, in, with money. It's been this way with our school system. I believe with all my heart that if you have a mind that you should be automatically thinking about preparedness and thinking about constantly living your life in such a manner, in such a way that you can't and you shouldn't be dependent upon the government to help you. I mean, some of the worst people you can actually even be around, believe it or not, especially when you start talking about faith, is family. Some of the worst people you can be around when you start talking about uh, economics, especially when you start about talking about real money, some of the worst people you can actually even approach is those who are in debt because they are part of the system. And, hey, look, the military is even, you know, you remember there was a time during this last past decade that they was actually, you know, taking everybody who they could get to come into the army. And now they're very selective about who they let in now. You know why? Because uh, the military pays very well, a whole lot. I mean, I remember seeing not too long ago um, a, a guy who's a sergeant one of his pay stuff, and I said, man, I never made that kind of money when I was in. And they are just according to the economy. But, you know, when you look at all these videos that Hollywood and everybody brings out and stuff, you know, old movies like like Braveheart, you know, that's one that I really, really talk about more than anything. Or, or Tears of the Sun, to see what's really, truly going on. You know, movies of impact, movies that would actually uh, get you to think if you are a thinking person. Because most people will continue, they'll look, look at this video, and they'll look at it and go, uh-huh, that's the truth. And then they'll leave from it with no thought whatsoever at all as if nothing ever happened at all nothing at all because uh, I'm not the one that can open your understanding um, it takes the spirit of truth in order to do that I do hope that I've actually said something 
that will stimulate the thought. I do hope that you would really truly consider uh, what I'm saying. And hey, you need to start networking around people who think just like you do, who believe just like you do. Because if you live around a bunch of people who you don't know who they are, they don't know who you are. And of course, coming from my perspective, if they don't serve the same um, Yahweh that I serve, the same Father that I do, and I know that Christians don't do that. I don't care what they say. They do not serve. We do not serve the same creator. And that's just a fact. Um, you need to get around some people you can trust. And people who believe like you do. Because if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, because when things start to go awry, you won't believe what the human spirit will do. Especially when it's between you and them.